What's going on guys? Coach Madden, YouGoProBaseball.com, here with Brent Porcio, Top Velocity, and we're talking about the most controversial stuff as it relates to pitching, and we got some good stuff, and we want to hear your uh, opinion on them. So what, what do yeah. you got? So we're going to start with this, and like we said, we want your comments here firing off because it's really more about you. We want to hear how the community, what everyone's uh, perspective on this to, to really fire this up, and it's going to be good. We're going to learn a lot. Um, I want to start with, um, uh, I guess, the topic that I've been scrutinized pretty hard for, weighted balls, right? A lot of people say, oh, that's, that's the guy who hates weighted balls, and I get that all the time, and I understand. But to, to tell you the truth, I got a few drills that have a weighted ball in it, you know, look out. But, but the thing is with weighted balls is the way I look at all throwing. If it gets extreme, then it starts unraveling, right? The, the biomechanics start unraveling. So, like, things that are extreme, like... Uh, extreme distance throws or running throws or high intent weighted ball throws, you know, for the purposes of trying to accelerate my arm speeds or for velocity, it starts to get out of what we're trying to do, which is develop an elite, efficient, high velocity pitcher because the, bi the biomechanics aren't really the focus anymore. So that becomes my issue with the weighted balls. And then if you look at some of the studies that have come out that have shown the injuries, and there's not many, that we need a lot more, uh, that's what we found. We found that it, obviously in the younger kids, if you, if you don't have good mechanics, and we're already in a sport that has a pattern of injury, there's a good chance you can hurt your arm, it, it sometimes can exaggerate these issues um, for, for those people. But, you know, everyone has their personal experience. Like John has a different experience that I think he needs to share. And then we want you to share your experience in the comments or your opinion. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a little different experience. Uh, Stevie Delabar uh, was my roommate in the Padres organization, and if you don't know about Stevie Delabar's story, he uh, messed up his elbow, had to have reconstructive surgery on his elbow, um, was out of the game, stopped playing, got released, everything, um, and then a couple years later was trying to teach a program to his kids, which included weighted balls. And he wanted to do the program, so he knew what he was teaching and what he was feeling, so he did that. And he had a lot of success with it. He came back within a year or two. He was a major league all-star. So it was an incredible story. So that's one thing. Obviously, I, 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 I uh, value his opinion very much. Um, but then also one year when I was getting ready for professional baseball, I didn't have anyone to throw with. So I built a mound in my garage, and I went through some weighted balls. I would throw some of the lighter ones, and then I would do like holds with some of the heavier ones and just go through that. And I felt good, and I had some success with it. So, you know, I, I don't think... Uh, at least from my perspective and my experience, I don't think they're all that bad. I do think it's a risk versus reward. You got to be smart. I see way too many kids who don't even throw a regular baseball correctly, grabbing weighted balls and <laughs> chucking them, which I don't agree with. And some of these younger guys doing it, I don't agree with. Um, so you got to be smart about it. But what do you guys think? Let us know. We want to we want to hear your opinions. So tell your stories too, like John. Tell your stories. Hey, I had a great experience with them. Or I had a horrible experience with them. I've, I've heard a lot of the horrible experiences because when I put myself out there against them, a lot of people want to share their experiences with me. But we want to hear more about, about what you think. Uh, another controversial topic, lifting, right? Uh -huh. Lifting specifically for pitchers here. And we've got guys back here doing bench press. Bench press is like something's like a big no-no, right? Don't, don't bench press. And we do it in our programs. Uh, it's just, to me, the, you know, I understand the, the issues that people... Strength coaches will say you don't get a lot of scapular movement. You're just working a lot of shoulder flexion. Um, I understand that. And that's why I do a lot of work and exercises outside of that to work in the scapular movements. But I can build a lot of upper body strength with it. Obviously, I do it in the rows as well. But I can build a lot of upper body strength, and that's what I want in my kinetic chain. I want powerful legs, powerful core, powerful upper body. Um, I definitely don't want to be out of balance in any way. And, and, and if you do that and you program it correctly, you don't do it the next day or right before you're throwing or, or if you do it really heavy and then you throw tomorrow, you obviously need some time to recover because you're exhausting the throwing muscles. We don't want to do that before we're throwing. But John's got a different take on this. <laughs> so, so I'm kind of against the bench press, at least the heavy bench press, because in my experience, uh, I went through this one year with my junior year of high school, I think I got into some heavy benching and I felt really, really tight in the front of the shoulder. And for me, it felt like I couldn't get that separation. Like I was real tight, my arm path was real short uh, and I couldn't get the separation. My velocity went down. So I didn't have a positive experience when I did that. Now, was I doing the right mobility stuff? Probably not. Uh, was I doing enough back with it? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but when I got into pro ball, we went from going from the heavy uh, barbell bench 
to lighter dumbbell bench, and I really had a lot of success with that. I felt good with that. We would go one arm up, keep one arm up, and come down. Um, one other thing, too, that I learned about the bench press uh, that really helped me was originally I was kind of out here flared out, and then tucking the yeah. elbows in really helped take some of the pressure off of here shoulders, yeah. and put it more where it's supposed to be. Um, but the, the one arm yeah. up and down, I really felt good with light-wise. It kind of helped with the stability, I thought, in the shoulder, and, I, and that's kind of what I stuck with throughout my career. But what do you think? Bench press or no bench press? Yeah, let us know. What down do you there. think? We'll we talk. Know. What about long toss? Yeah, that's another big one. Once again, like I said, that's if we get it to max distances where we're trying to go foul pole to foul pole, or like I would do before I tore my rotator cuff, I would go uh, on a football field, field goal to field goal. And once again, if you look at the studies by SMI, when you increase to max distances, things start changing biomechanically. You start mo using less of the forward trunk movements. And you start shortening up and using more rotational movements, which showed put a lot more stress in your arm. And they even said when you got to 120 feet of distance, you were at the same torque level or the amount of stress in your arm than you were experiencing on the mound at 60 feet. So anything past 120 starts to get, I believe, risky and out of the mechanics of what you're trying to do on the mound. It's funny you say that because when I used to do long toss, I never went past 120, 150 just because it felt bad it didn't feel good especially being a lower arm yeah, angle guy like... <laughs> yeah and i wanted to see the the movement the sink i wanted to stay on, on on that plane with the ball um so that's that's funny that you say that but one thing i will say is when i did throw uh that distance basically the formula that i always used when i was trying to increase velocity by doing this was take the number of throws by the intensity of the throws and progress it that way meaning if i'm trying to build up to something from a, on a season standpoint, you know, I would start slow and start closer as I got further. Because here's, here's, my, here's my thing with the intensity is I can throw with the same intensity from here to the camera yeah. as I could yeah. 300 feet. Right. So the distance really doesn't mean much to me. Um, the only thing is when I went further, I felt out of whack with my delivery and what I'm trying things. to do. Yeah. yeah. So the distance, the furthest I felt was good for me was 120, 150. So we're kind of supporting shorter distances here. But what do you think? Do you believe in a max distance? Tell us, what's the difference to you to short distance and your, and your long distance throws to a, to a max distance? We talked about bench pressing. What about Olympic, Olympic lifting? lifting? Yeah, big controversy, right? We hear that. Don't ever do Olympic lifting or even heavy lifting. Don't ever do heavy lifting. Well, we believe in it, I believe in it because it worked for me and it's a total body movement. So you're training the kinetic chain to move as efficiently as it can to maximize this power up the body. And that's the same thing you're trying to do on the mound. And the coolest thing is if you look at the Olympians, they jump really high, they're very strong, they're very mobile. Um, it, it, it really helps them build not just a, a bigger body because not a lot of them hypertrophy or grow and it helps them build a more uh, efficient or better software to move more explosively and more efficiently, which I find transfers really well to another movement that's very complex and very dynamic like the pitching delivery. It's just you got to understand how to, the technique works and you got to understand how it needs to be programmed with your throwing and that's the challenges. But once you do that, I think it's one of the best uh, lifting approaches to, in baseball you can take. What do you think? So I had experience with Olympic lifting as well. Uh, my junior, senior year at Auburn University, we did Olympic lifting, and I, I gained about one mile per hour. Um, we had a few guys that got injured doing it. I didn't get injured doing it, um, but I just didn't see a huge benefit in it. I was naturally always more explosive. Um, to me, plyometrics and sprints and things of that nature were sufficient enough. So for me, my standpoint on Olympic lifting is kind of risk versus reward. Um, where, you, where are you at in your career? Um, do you need it right now? You know, at the time in high school, I was already, a, you know, my senior year throwing in the 90s. Uh, so I didn't really need to do that. You know, I was already where I needed to be. If, maybe if you're a uh, 78 guy in high school, you got to do something, you know, if you want to play at that next level. So I understand that. And I definitely see the value in it. And I think it's beneficial. And I know that it works. Um, just for me, I didn't continue doing it into pro ball after Auburn. Yeah, so what do you think? Olympic lifting, no Olympic lifting? Should we do heavy lifting as baseball players or pitchers, or should we not be lifting at all? That's something that we want to hear from you in the comments. Accuracy. Yes. Okay, accuracy or velocity. That's another big controversy, right? What is it? Is it all about being accurate, or is it all about velocity? Obviously, I believe in velocity, but I'm going to be like John. We're going to believe in both here. 
Uh, but you can't take away velocity. We, we were talking about it earlier. It's just the one component that does something very important to the hitter. It gives them less time to pick you up. So the harder I throw, the less time they have to react. And that's just something you can't consider not being valuable to a pitcher. So I believe velocity will never go away. Um, but you're right. You've got to have both. You can't just do one or the other. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And whether you guys like it or not, uh, we in the baseball community use velocity as a measurement. So, you know, coaches, scouts, uh, they're looking at this to see, can this guy, it's basically a, a step in the door. You can, can you play at this level? And, and that's, that's what they use. So you got to have both. you got to have the velocity. you got to have the, uh, the accuracy as well. You'll hear some guys arguing, you know, Greg Maddox. That's, you know, he, he, he was the guy, the accuracy guy. He could put it wherever he wanted and get batters out. And you hear guys, oh, well, if you throw 100 miles an hour, but you can't throw a strike, it doesn't matter, which obviously that makes a lot of sense. But having both is 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 really what we need. Why can't you have both, right? The best players in the game, they have both. both. So what do you think? Put it in the comments. Is it accuracy or is it velocity or is it both? What do you think? We want to hear your opinion. What else? I mean, there's a lot more controversy here. We missed it. We probably did. What do you think? We'll yeah. make another video. Yeah, how about that? Not. Give us more controversy or things that you say, wow, this coach is saying this and this coach is saying the total opposite and post it in there and, and we'll do another one on We talked about doing a video called Old School versus New School. So give us some tips on what we could put in that video. And if you want to see that video, give a thumbs up on this video. And if we get over a thousand thumbs up, we'll make that video for you guys, all right? I like it. Also, we did make a video for you guys, um, four tips to how to instantly increase your pitching velocity, some really good stuff. The big ideas that support Brent's pitching program are in there. So if you're a pitcher and you're trying to improve your pitching velocity, you're definitely going to want to check that one out. It's at the first link down below. Click it. It'll take you to a page. You enter your first name and your email. We'll shoot you that video over right away. You watch it. You implement it. You're going to see some results. Thanks for watching, guys. And we're going to chop it up with you down in the comments below. So we'll see you in there.